Give our young people another great amen. Yeah. Spoken hitherto. 
Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. And she said, Let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance, and her countenance was no more sad. I want to talk about a motivating mother. A motivating mother. A motivating mother. Before a mother can be motivated, she has to be motivated. Mothers are powerful beings. I dare say mothers are the most powerful beings on the face of the earth. People who will not be controlled by law will alter their behavior for mom. You can threaten to send a man to the electric chair, he'll still murder. But he'll do amazing stuff not to hurt his mom. They've had guys locked in rooms with hostages. Couldn't get them out, but what they did, they found his mom. Let his mama talk to him. Mothers are very influential. And the question comes, how are you using your influence? Are you using your influence for good or are you using it for bad? Right. That case in there, everybody been talking about Hannah. I was in a meeting and they were preaching on Hannah and the preacher, a Reverend uh, Lady of Johnson, he, he preached on Hannah Lee was here. And I was real tempted to say, that's my father, there about my father. I just just had this strong urge to talk about Hannah today because here you have a woman who has this strong, strong motivation, strong urge to be a mother. She impacts the life of this child, Samuel. And 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 you know, LK, now the only really distinction we have about him is that he's Samuel's dad. You really don't hear any more about him? You hear a whole lot said about him. And when you think about it, uh, uh, the only thing you really distinguish is Hannah is the fact that she's Samuel's mom. Um, uh, she, more than he, uh, is, is distinguished because of her strong desire to have this boy. Oh, and, and when you think about it, uh, genealogy and, and piety can do only so much. Yeah. Uh, but, but, but really, who distinguishes us is God. Amen. But, but you are a sum total of your genealogy. You can't declare your greatness without giving your mama and your daddy credit. See, see, see I, there's no sense of me trying to appear to be something and not want to give my parents credit. Yeah. Because I am the sum total of the contributions made by my mama and my dad. Right. You might have a dad as sorry as it all get out, but you got his genes. Yeah. You might disown him, disclaim him, act like you don't want to have anything to do with him, but when they start talking about DNA, you won't look him up. Whatever you say, see, 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 everybody has the potential of doing good and evil. What you do with your, your sum total is really dependent upon what you do with it. Because your dad is a drunk, don't mean you have to get out of home. Well, well. I look at this passage and look at this, this scenario because, see, not only am I a sum total of what my parents have contributed, but my life. Uh, uh, reflects upon them. Yeah. That's why I brought with the people. He ain't hurt nobody but himself. There is no way you can hurt no one but yourself. Yeah. 
When you hurt yourself, you hurt everyone who loves you. When you hurt yourself, you hurt everyone who cares about you. When you hurt yourself, you hurt your mama. Because you're a reflection on her. And one of the saddest moments is when you see these mass murderers or these people that's got some despicable act and they got a microphone in front of the mama's face and she has to make a statement. And I don't see him really say that most of but I say, just pray for my child. Yeah. I didn't raise it that way. Come on here, somebody. Yeah. But you realize they wouldn't have bothered that old lady if you hadn't been acting a fool. Right. It'd be much better if they wanted to interview her because you had done something positive yeah. instead of something negative. Yeah. So let me start talking about wholeness, wholeness, wholeness. The first thing I see in the passage that Hannah has a problem because she's not old. Yeah. Wholeness has not to do with whether or not you got two legs or not. You can have both legs, both feet, all fingers, all toes, and still not be whole. Yeah. Wholeness has not to do with your bank account. For, because it appears that K9 was a pretty well off fellow. From the I see the passage, he's a rich man. He, he's going away on sabbaticals. He's doing this this trip. He's taking these journeys. He got two wives instead of one. And as good as you fellas think that sounds, in those days, if you had two wives, you had to take care of both of them. Yeah. I had a hard enough time to take care of one. So that so that so that he is a well-off man, and he loves Hannah more than he loves the other one, the nine. Oh yeah, yeah. See, the implication is that he loves Hannah. He only married the other girl so he can have some too. Yeah. What's the Hannah witness here? Yeah. Uh, what I'm trying to get you to see is Hannah from 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 the out from the outward appearance. It appears Hannah has everything any woman could possibly want. Uh -huh. a, a, a husband who loves her. She is well off. She is doing fine. She got everything. She's a spiritual woman. She has everything going her way, but she still does not feel whole. And I think I want to share with you today that you don't have to be a woman, you don't have to be somebody who want to be a mama, not to be whole. There are a lot of folk who are not whole today. There are a lot of folk with voids in their lives. There are a lot of folk with empty places in their lives. You know what your place is, you know what your void is. And Satan can mess with you a lot of times. You see, the, the, the thing is, there are a lot of women who can't have children who still can't be whole when they are alive. How do you handle your boy? How do you handle that which is not? How do you deal with what's wrong with you? You have to be careful because see, we got to get all philosophical. Well, God is punishing you. That's why you are the shape you're in. And of course, that's what Benina was probably trying to tell you. Know, God is I got babies because God loves me. You don't have babies because God is punishing you. And no church for bad on that. God's judgment on folk. You, know? you do realize the reason why we had September 11th because homosexuality and bad marriage in this country. I don't propose to have all the answers, but I do know that it's not that simple. That the first thing is, no one has everything. So if God is punishing folk, he's punishing everybody. I have some things you don't have, you have some things I don't have. Really, it speaks not to our spirituality. Your spirituality deals with your relationship with God. Amen. Being a child of God does not mean that I have everything I want. Being a child of God does not mean that I am perfect. Being a child of God means that I have God in my life. And whatever I don't have, God can more than compensate for it. Amen. Amen. God is God is for me. He's done the whole world against me. She wants to be whole. Yeah. You remember her problem is she doesn't have a child. And, and this 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 not, not having a child. And you remember say before and I'm like going through all that again, is that in those days having a child was, was a lot more important than it is today. Yeah. It meant a lot to them to be a mother. Yeah. 
And I think I'm going to tell you that there are a lot of mothers who have not been motivated to be a mother. Right. Yeah. Right. You see, because you are a biological mama, don't mean you've been motivated to be. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you. And see, see, being motivated to be a mother means you're motivating. You have a responsibility as a mother. You have a responsibility as a parent to do all you can to help that child grow up in the fear and the admonition of God. You have a responsibility. You have a responsibility. You have a responsibility. It's a responsibility you cannot delegate. You can pass it on to your mama. See, it bothers me. Like I tell you all the time, I got to promise some of these big black parents trying to be mom. You have these children not be parents. Uh, you have no business passing your child on to your mom. Your mama should be enjoying her evening years. Y'all be having a good life. Y'all be she should not spend all her only babysitting for your lazy behind. You want to go to the party so you drop your babies off. You want to go to the club so you drop your babies off. And eventually your mama, your, your babies call your mama mama because they see her more than they see you. And then you got nerve enough to get mad. <laughs> call them mama because that's all they know. They ain't learned nothing constructive from you. All they learn from you is how to shake their rope. All they learn from you is how to call up missing.
much to be thankful for. You hear people committing suicide. Why did they do it? They had so much to live for. Yes! They did have a lot to live for. But the devil has a way of magnifying your flaw. The devil has a way of magnifying your problem. And he can make your problems appear to be unsurmountable. He to go through life like everything is fine. And some of y'all have had sheltered lives. And you have a problem. I don't see why. You ain't lying, you can't see. Because your life is so shattered, you don't know what the real world is like. You don't even know what you your parents sheltered you when you were a child. You got married, somebody else starts sheltering you. You've been living in this new talk, you existence. But the problem is, you cannot live your entire life in that condition. I bet you say, this that awful day will surely come. It happened to you, it happened to your children. Don't happen to live, it happened to your grandchildren, but you're going to have to deal with it before you die. Uh, Life is real. Life has its difficulties. You cannot go through life whole all the time. There is no wholeness without God. Without God being the supplement, your problems will eat you Without me being whole. Not only do I see the wholeness, but I see the weapon. Motivated mother's best weapon is prayer. Motivated mother's best weapon is prayer. You heard that I found a long time ago. You cannot. Be with your children all the time. Right. One of the most, one of the most humiliating parts of being a parent, one of the most humbling parts of being a parent, is when you recognize, okay, how strong you think you are, how protected you want to be, you can't be with them all the time. You might be there shower going to the front that they ain't got it from, because you're in the back seat. <laughs> You try to be a good parent. All you need is to mess up their from. <laughs> oh, I wish I had a witness here. You trying to watch every move and you don't be there and watch everything. And they will run and go in the restroom and do something like you right there. Don't even know what's going on. <laughs> you got to understand that you have to trust God. To fill in the gap. Yeah. You gotta trust God to raise your children. You gotta trust God to look out for them when you can't look out for them. And if you wanna trust God, you gotta talk to God. Tell him all about it. Oh, wish I had a witness here. Oh, Sam Tampa testify. All of us can testify. We were in some places we had no business being, doing some things we had no business doing. And the only reason we're here this morning is because somebody.
got a problem. She's got old and she takes up problems of the Lord. Some of them don't understand that. But you know, that's a good example. That's a good example. Take it to the Lord. Take it to the Lord when it's illogical. Take it to the Lord. Take it to the Lord when it's not reasonable. Take it to the Lord. When, when people are taking it, that's another. Don't worry about it. Pray to the Lord. He said, if you just keep home knocking. If you just keep home knocking. Remember he said, prayers asking, prayers seeking, but prayers also knocking. Just keep on knocking. Keep on knocking. Just keep on talking to God about it. Keep on putting it in God's hands. You can just keep on knocking. And God will hear and answer your prayer. That's a strong weapon. That's a strong weapon. That's a strong weapon. Prayer is a strong weapon. Prayer is a strong weapon. And you know the problem with our children? We got too many children who can't sing that song y'all hear me talk about all the time. Or if I can hear my mother pray again, they can't hear you pray again because they never heard you pray in the first place. All right, all right, all right. Y'all fussing about prayer, don't pray in school. The problem is not that we don't pray in school. The problem is we don't have enough folk praying in their house. We had more prayer at home. We had more prayer at the house. We could turn houses into home. She prayed. She prayed. She prayed. I, that's a sermon right there. Just praying about your, your problem. Praying about your lack of holiness. Praying and soliciting God. Asking God to submit or to help you in your situation. Praying to God. Pray, turn them over to the Lord. You got a way with the son. You got a way with the daughter. Turn them over to the Lord. Pray about it. I dare you to pray about it. You can talk to them till you're blue in the face. They ain't going to hear you. But I dare you to pray about it. Just keep praying. Just, just keep putting them before the Lord. God can do something that you cannot do. God can change your life. God can turn them around. Just keep praying about it. Ask some other folk to pray. Not be bashful. Just not long. I need you to pray for my daughter. Pray for my son. Call Pray over my prayer meeting. She run down like they, they in that prayer meeting. They they pray for pray for y'all. They, they pray for every service. Every Saturday, every service is prayed for. Whether you go there or not, they pray for. They pray for me. Whether I'm there or not, I was in four Wednesday, but they were praying for me. I wouldn't even have to ask nobody. I'm talking about it, but I know they prayed for me yesterday. Cause they got a prayer ministry who's praying. But she got a sick list there, and she called every person by name. She prayed for every person they know about. If your name is not being called, your loved one, because you have turned it into it. You turn the name in, they're going to call their name. They're going to pray for them. They're going to call them by name. Yeah, yeah. She prayed for people who are unemployed. Every person that's unemployed, she would pray for them. Come, and I've had people who we prayed and God answered our prayer. They didn't even have sense enough to tell us that God gave them a job so we can say thank you, Lord. Oh, help me, somebody. But my point is that God, they keep praying, they call them by name. When you call the names, God does hear and answer prayer. There is power in prayer. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. The effectual fervent prayers of the righteous are better than much. She's praying, she's praying, she's bitterly praying, she's grievingly praying. She, she is praying with, with great happiness of heart. She's putting a part of her whole soul into her prayer. She's not praying loudly, but she's so in tune. Her lips are moving, but the words are not coming out. You see, you see, your best prayers are not prayers so can you.
When you are talking to God, God is talking to you. All right. You'll be misunderstood. Yes, Lord. And sometimes the people you expect to help you the most will be the first one to mislabel you. Praising God. 
God, she started praising God. Just at the word, she started praising God. When was the last time you praised God? See, I'm talking about people love to love God. We love the God. Lord, please give me this. Lord, please give me that. How much time do you spend praising? I purpose in my heart from now on, I'm going to at least spend as much time praising Him as I did in I wish I had a witness here. If I've been asking for 10 years, I got to praise him for 10 years for just that. I'm going to praise him anyway. I'm going to praise him for that. I wish I had a witness here. You got to learn how to praise him. Sometimes, you know, y'all see people come up here giving a good report. Now, I got time for that. We ought to hear that. And sometimes I got a problem. You asking folks to pray for you when you got your problem, but you won't tell us God to solve your problem. And just like y'all get all sad and ready to cry when they tell us about the problem, you ought to be ready to celebrate and tell them about the solution. Or oh, be able to jump up for joy when you find out God has answered the prayer. God has blessed you. God came through. God did what we ask him to do. You ought to say thank you, Lord. My dad says somebody to do something good for you. At least you can say it's thank you. I wish I had a witness here. The least you're going to do is say thank you, Lord. All right. I can't. I'll put this up. I was about to start tasting the pork chop. Let me shut it down. Let me shut it down. Let me shut it down. Let me start smelling that cake, baby. They taste that fire that's on the way there. I can't see them drifting. They drifting. Start leaning toward the door. You know? All right. Let me, let me close it out. I'm going to close it out. I'm going to close it out talking about worship. <laughs> Do I have a witness here? Bible declared that Hannah prayed to the Lord. And then the Lord answered her prayer. She was empty, but now she's whole. And when God fills the voice, the other stuff just falls in place. Do I have a witness here? I tell you that Samuel is defined. By his mama and dad. Yes. His mother and father are defined by him. Yeah. But look at the part of the text that always gave me concern. The Bible says when she got the child, she gave the child back to the Lord. Yes. Do I have a witness here? Yeah. How could a woman want a boy so bad and then give him up? I wish I had a witness here. I'm talking about worship today. And then you, you get to the point where you realize Santa is on Hannah, rather is on the son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, you really can't be the parent you are supposed to be until you give your children completely over to the Lord. Do I have a witness here? Because you see, my brothers and sisters, in the final analysis, the Lord is really their real parent. The Lord is the one who determines their success or their failure. Do I have a witness here? The Lord is the one who defines their life. So y'all, children's life the best of because you messed them up. I wish you had a witness here. Yes, I want my boy to be like me. Yeah. But I want him to be like me most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all don't hear me. Well, well, see, well. see, the problem is they don't just pick up the good habits. Yeah. Always they have with us here. They see all of them. Yeah. They don't just see you at church. Yeah. They see all of them. Yeah. They don't just see you when you come. Yeah. They see you when you get back. They don't see you only when you quote the scriptures. <laughs> they see you when you quote some other stuff. Do I have a witness here? And you need to learn how to turn them over into the hands of the Lord. Hannah says, I'm going to give him to the Lord. El Cana says, uh, uh, 
let's go and sacrifice to the Lord. And Hannah says, no, I, I'm going to stay here and weep my boy. Yeah, I got to wean him for three years. And when he's weaned in the third year, I, I'll take him uh, to the priest. Do I have a witness here? Oh, what a wonderful three years. In those three years, she told him uh, how much she loved him. In those three years, she bonded uh, with her child. In those three years, she told him how she prayed for him and how she knew the Lord had his hands on him. In those three years, she said, I didn't pray for a child, I prayed for a boy child. Because I was specific with my prayer. And the Lord heard and I answered my prayer. But look at this mother motivating her son. You are a special child. Do I have a witness here? The Lord has his hands on you. That's why a razor will never touch your head. Because the Lord has his hands on you. You are destined for greatness. Because the Lord has his hands on
motivate others to be the best that they can be. To realize that God has given potential. That God didn't just touch Samuel, God touched every last one of us. Oh, he has a blessing for us in different arenas. We are not all blessed in the same arena, but he's blessed every last one of us. Every last one of us is special in some part of life. You just have to realize your God-given purpose and give God the glory. Amen. 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 Some of you don't know what I'm talking about. Some of you think I'm just going through the motions because you are still not holy. If you got a ball in your life, I just solicit you, beg you to turn your problem over to the Lord. Oh, I know you got a lot going for you, but I'm not talking about what you got going for you. I'm talking about that area that's not so hot. That the empty space in your soul that you don't talk about much. The place in your soul you've been trying to cover up with new clothes, a fancy car, and jewelry, and diamonds, and fur. I'm talking about that place you've been trying to hide when you surround yourself with people who you call your friends. You don't really mean you well. I'm asking you today to just invite God into your heart. Turn it over to the Lord and say, Lord, here I am. With my empty spaces, that preacher said that you can make me whole. I want to be made whole. Oh, God is such a great God. God can make you whole and you can still be poor. God can make you whole and you don't even have a car to drive. God can make you whole and you stand at the bus stop. <laughs> if God touched your life, he can really bless your life. In an awesome way. If you're here today, now is the time for you to make a decision. You can ignore what I'm saying and keep on going in your existence, or you can respond to the word of God and let God have way and let God receive the glory. Turn it over to the Lord and let Him work it out. I declare to you that God will hear and answer your prayer. And it is good sense, it's just good sense to give God a try. You try everything else. You know that other stuff is not working. You, you go to the doctor, you go to psychiatrist, you go to psychologist. That's not really going to solve your problem. You need God in your life. God is your creator. He made you. He knows all about you. He knows what's missing in your life. Surrender your will to His will. Your way to His way. Let God come into your heart and into your life. God bless you. Stand up today. Will you come out? Jesus is calling my prayers of being uttered by saints. My saints are praying for your salvation, for your oldness. Whosoever will, let them come. If you're here today and say, preacher, I'm whole. I need a church, right? This is the time I need a church home. If you are in search of a church home, you can come today. We got a good church right here. Okay? Can minister to you and let you minister to us. If you're here and say, my preacher, I know I'm going to join your church, but I just want a privilege to pray with you. That God will lead you where He wants you to be. If you'll come, we'll pray with you. We'll pray for you. That God will lead you in the direction of the path that He would have you go. If you're the man, so I'm preaching. I'm all right in the church. And I'm going through something right now. I'm going through a storm. And I'm soliciting the saints to pray for me. You say that the effectual, fervent prayers of saints make a difference. I want y'all to pray for me. I don't want to tell you what it is, but just pray for me. We can do that. We can do it even if you tell us what it is. Just, just ask us to pray. And we'll be more than happy. We'll be honored to pray with you and pray for you. To call your man. Whosoever will let them come. Come while you still have a chance. Wow. The numbers being given by saints are praying. Will you come and surrender your way to his way? Your will to his way. Let God's word rule and direct your life.
Will you come to that? Will you come to that? 